recently completed agenda items. Send Rhodey, also known as the War Machine, also known as Tony Stark's best friend forever, to track down biohack ninjas connected with the break-in at Stark International's Tokyo branch. Do not freak out about Rhodey being missing. In progress agenda items, team up with Spider-Man to find and rescue Rhodey. Try to be nice to Spider-Man. Find out why former club owner and current executive assistant and life coach Mary Jane Watson has Peter Parker's emergency number. Tony Stark is getting worried. There is no sign of his friend, but Friday detects the approach of their ally. The amazing Spider-Man swings by. The hero has been looking for Rhodey all night, but has had little luck in finding the man. After searching the area where Rhodey's last known transmission came from, Tony finally finds something. A lug nut from a 2007 Chevrolet convertible. There are also some small oil spots and vague rubber burns. We can surmise there was a car on this roof. Spider-Man is surprised at this, and the heroes wonder where the car went. Meanwhile, Rhodey remains at the mercy of his own armor. The mysterious woman tries to interrogate the man, so Rhodey attempts an escape. The ninjas outnumber and outarm him, but Rhodey is able to fight back and manages to take one of their technologically advanced swords. He battles the ninjas until the woman uses the war machine armor to knock him down. Back home, Mary Jane decides she is going to leave. Her elevated heart rate and core temperature suggest she is upset. She refuses to say what happened, only that she is declining Tony's job offer. Rhodey is doing well against the ninjas and nearly manages to escape when he is surprised to see Iron Man and Spider-Man having tracked their friend down using a strange signal that had suddenly appeared in the city. Panicking, Rhodey orders Tony to get out of here, but it's too late. The mystery woman is able to tear apart Tony's armor and Spider-Man's web shooters, combining the material with the war machine armor to form a massive technological monstrosity. Whatever this creature is, it has completely taken over our armor systems. I cannot shut this down. I cannot overload her systems. I have never come across an interface like this. The other Avengers are a half a world away, and it would be unsafe to call the local authorities for their assistance. I don't have a way to stop this. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my recap and review of Invincible Iron Man number 8. So here we have another Iron Man comic. It was a good one overall, featuring a lot of fun dialogue and action, but uh, out of all the Iron Man comics I've reviewed so far, this one might be the least exciting. Issue number 8 continues the story quite nicely, but doesn't bring forth any major twists. The climax of this story was great, and I found it really funny how Rhodey almost broke free on his own, only for Peter and Tony to sort of bumble in on the scene and make things much, much worse. That was great. That was hilarious, and I'm totally on board with things, but the whole moment kind of gets ruined when Tony, Rhodey, Peter, and Friday are all kind of doing their shtick and making quips. To me, that was all a little bit too much and kind of ruined the drama of the moment. It made me miss Doom a bit, whose seriousness balanced nicely with Tony's joke making, and did wonders for making the first story arc feel balanced and powerful. Here, all the characters are kind of jokey, so it doesn't quite feel as serious. It's fine, don't get me wrong, I still rather firmly give this comic a recommendation. It's always fun to have Spider-Man in the mix, Diodato did a great job with the comics art, and I really like most of Bendis' writing. It's well structured and the pacing is spot on. I can tell this issue is setting things up quite nicely and the story should be getting more exciting soon, so I'm looking forward to that as well. As we continue on this Road to Civil War II business, I am enjoying myself, even if I'm still not entirely sure how any of the story is actually connected to Civil War II. Surely there must be some sort of connective tissue somewhere here, but for now that's kind of a mystery. I have a feeling it has something to do with this girl who appeared at the end of issue 7, but let's not worry about that too much for now. At some point in the future, I'm going to make a Civil War 2 preview video where we'll talk about stuff like this in further detail. For now, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.